Did you know that you can format the output of your large language models? In fact, if you take a look at the LangChain documentation, there's 12 different examples provided. Hey, welcome back to another video in this LangChain OpenAI API and LLMs series. Today, we're gonna to be covering output parsers. In fact, we're gonna be covering two in-depth examples with JSON as well as CSV outputs. I'm gonna take you through a normal prompt template as well as a few shot prompt template. So that way we can expand the difficulty a little bit. All the code in this video is gonna be through Python and I'm using a Google Colab notebook. If that sounds good, let's start coding. So I just opened up a brand new Google Colab notebook. I'm gonna create a new cell over here. First thing we're gonna do is pip install and we're gonna put open AI this first one and then what i'm gonna do for the second one i'm just gonna copy this code and i'm gonna put ling chain now this will take about probably 30 seconds to run so just run both of these i'm just gonna fast forward in the video uh, when both of them have been installed into the notebook all right so now this is in uh what we're gonna set up is my open ai api key now i'm not gonna give you guys my key but i'm gonna show you really quick how you can set this up specifically in this notebook so environ like this then just put your open AI underscore API underscore key, and then it's gonna be equal to, and then you just paste your API key in right over here. I'm gonna paste my key in, but I'm gonna hide that and we're gonna move on with the code. All right, and one other thing that I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna copy and paste this over here. I'm just gonna import in warnings. Uh, there's a new version of LangChain that just got published 0 0.1, but all the impacts of this new change have not hit Google Colab yet. So there are gonna be some uh, imports that are gonna be a little bit depreciated in the future. And I'm gonna make those changes in a notebook that's available down below, depending when you watch this video, if it's a year, two years, three years in the future. But with that being said, I don't wanna have the warning messages every single time I run pieces of code. So that's why I'm gonna import this in. And with that, let's start importing in some stuff. So uh, what I'm gonna do is from typing import list and then from langchain.prompts, we're gonna import a few things over here. So our chat prompt template, prompt template, view shot prompt template. Then what we're gonna import in is from langchain core, we're gonna do dot pi antic v1. We're gonna import base model and field. Then we're gonna say from lang chain dot lms import in open AI. And lastly from lang chain core dot output underscore parsers import json output parser like that and then comma separated list so these two are the output parsers i'm going to be taking you guys through today now there's a ton of them out here and i just went to the python.langchain.com the docs over here so output parsers and then you can see all of them that you have over here so json right over here and then we have down below our csv of which I'm gonna be taking you guys through. So if you wanna learn how some of these other ones work, just click over here and see the specific tutorial. So like JSON right over here talks about everything you need to import, shows you an example class, and there's also streaming down below. And so take a look if you need any other specific output parsers. But with that being said, we're gonna jump into our JSON example and let's get started. So what I'm gonna do is actually before this JSON example, I'm just gonna call a model over here. So I'm gonna say model equals open AI. I'm just gonna set a temperature of 0 0.6. You don't wanna have this too crazy of a model. So a pretty mild overall, nothing too spicy. But with that being said, let's start with our JSON example. And we're gonna have to create a class based off of the documentation. So what I'm gonna do for this example is take a look at baseball home runs. So a, a baseball player, if he hits a baseball out of, the, out of the diamond, it's considered a home run. It's a stat that a lot of baseball fans uh, really like. And if you're at the game, you wanna catch a home run ball. 
regardless, I want to create a LLM that you can put in a player and you can see how many home runs that they have across their career, but I want it formatted as JSON. So let's do that. So home runs over here, then we're going to put base model. Okay. And first thing that we're going to do is have our player name. So player name like this. Now this is going to be a string on here. And then you're going to set your field and I should say equals. So I missed that. You're going to set this up field. Let's put a description in here. So description and we're going to say equals baseball player name. All right. Next thing that we're going to do is put in our home runs. So put home runs over here. Now this is gonna be an integer and you're gonna say equals field. You put a description, description equals, and we'll say our total home runs. We'll say like total career home runs, career home runs. All right, so now we have that. And what we're gonna do now is set up our JSON parser. So JSON underscore parser, and I've seen it a lot with example codes, just parser, but since we're going to be doing a CSV and JSON, I feel like we should do that. And that's going to be equal to, and it's going to be this JSON output parser, which we called above, right? Or we imported in above, I should say. And what we're going to throw in here is something called a pydantic object. And then we're going to say that's equal to our baseball home runs. So that is going to be this class that we created. And that's going to be our definition. So what this essentially does for Pydantic is it's a data validation library for Python. So this is going to help us get our JSON input, right? Or I should say JSON output. So we have our JSON output parser. We have our Pydantic object, which is this baseball home run class. So you might be wondering where the live coding went. Well, unfortunately, I'm actually recording this a few days after the fact. I sent this over to my editor and yeah, all the video was not good. So essentially what happened is I, I record on two screens, both the camera and also the live recording when I'm coding. Something went wrong with OBS and the bit rate and everything lagged. Like it wasn't even usable. I tried fixing it. No bueno. So I'm just going to walk through line by line. Essentially what I did, I apologize for no live coding on this side of things, but I still wanted to get this video up. So I believe we stopped at this JSON parser. So next what we're going to do is set up an example prompt, a prompt template. We've done this a lot of other videos. So we're going to say our template equals and this format instructions is new. You'll see it next line, uh, but we put this in over here as a variable. We do a new line. We have player, another new line. And then we have our partial variables over here, which reminds me of uh, the good old calc days. Uh, so we have our format instructions again, right? But this time we're going to JSON parser .get format instructions. So this goes back over here to this JSON parser that we defined. Uh, and then we're running, I believe this is a method over here, the get format instructions. And then we have our normal input variables, which you guys again should be pretty familiar with based off this prompt template. So if you wanted to see an example uh, of essentially what's going on with this JSON parser, we can just print out our example prompt and format it. I put in Babe Ruth over here, one of the greatest baseball players of all time. And it says the output should be formatted as a JSON instance that can form to the JSON schema below. As an example for the schema, properties, foo, all, all this stuff, I'm not going to read it all. And then it says here's the output schema, properties, player name, title, player name, description, baseball player name, type, right, string, home runs, title, home runs, description, total home runs, type, integer, required, right? We want to have that player name, home runs, and then we throw a paper. So essentially it's, it's telling our LM what we want to have printed out at the very end or at this one, it's going to be sent to JSON, but you know what I mean? Then what I want to do is I, I made this in two different lines. When I originally coded this, I just put it over here for this print just to show you guys, but essentially we're going to send this example prompt to our model that we defined earlier. Then it prints out, you can see this JSON player name, Babe Ruth home run 714. So essentially just to go through, how the JSON works again, set up your JSON parser, set up your model. Uh, model can be outside of this tutorial itself, but whatever, right? Then we set up our class baseball home runs. Essentially what we're doing over here is showing what we want for the JSON, right? Our player name and home runs. We set up our JSON parser with this Pydantic object. We set up our JSON parser with this 
pydantic object. Then we have our example prompt, which the only new thing is this partial variables in the format instructions. Format instructions go first on this prompt and then also sets up with this partial variable, which goes back to this JSON parser. And then this is what's essentially being fed to the model. And then we print that out. Take a look at real quick before we go into this CSV example over here. If you want to format your JSON, use JSON formatter.org, right? I throw in over here this player name, Babe Ruth, home run 714, essentially just copied from over here. Then format beautify, and you can see it has pretty nice output. And then if you want to check out, like if Babe Ruth actually has 714 home runs, Babe Ruth, right? Load this up. I can tell you for a fact. He does have 714, but we have 714 over here with all the stats. Ruth was just such a better baseball player than everyone else at that time. That OPS 206 plus and 182 war is insane. So now we're going to take a look at a CSV example. So essentially with CSV, think about like a comma separated list. Essentially, we've used those before in Excel or even if you've used Python pandas quite a bit, just importing in CSVs. So should be pretty familiar with it. Yeah, we set up our CSV parser, right? Comma separated list output parser. Then we have our examples over here. So what we're gonna be feeding to the model this time, the reason why we have examples, if you go above, right? Our other one that we set up earlier, we have this class, which is kind of our example on this side of things, where this time with the CSV parser, we don't have a class. I was reading through the documentation and it didn't have a class uh, with this throughout LinkChain. So I believe this is the correct way to do it. Anyways, uh, not to go on too much of a tangent. So I, I fed it essentially the year and then the top five pitchers by strikeouts. So we have like Shane Bieber, Jacob deGrom, Trevor Bauer, Lucas Giolito, and then Aaron Nola. And then uh, essentially I did 1914 as well, hundred years ago. Uh, I only knew two of these pitchers though. I, I don't know Falkenberg. Walter Johnson, Grover Alexander. I, I've owned baseball cards of both of them. Uh, Mosley, I don't know. Hendricks, I just know the guitars. So then we set up another example prompt over here, right? Format instructions like I, I talked about above, right? We have the year and then the pictures down below. Then we have partial variable format instructions. Again, the same thing, right? Dot get format instructions from this CSV parser that we set up. Now we have our, our prompt. So our prompt is a little bit different because now we're going to be using a few shot prompt and that way we can set up our specific examples. If you're not too familiar with few shot, make sure to watch that video. It's actually pretty helpful, um, but this way we can feed in our examples to our prompt. So then we have our example prompt, which is our example prompt over here. Once again, uh, with the few shot prompt template, also we can set up a prefix and suffix. So I threw those in there and then we still have our input variable for the year. So just to show you like how this would work right now, it says, I want to find the top five pitchers with strikeouts for a year. Your response should be in a list of CSV values, right? Example, foo, bar, baz, like this. And we're feeding it 2020, it has those examples over here. Then your response should be a list of comments, separated values, right? 1914 feeds that list. And then we have year 1952. So I fed it 1971. I actually fed it a few different years and it wasn't correct, interesting enough. So we have... Tom Seaver, Bob Gibson, Fergie Jenkins, Nolan Ryan, and Steve Carlton. But that wasn't the 1971 strikeout leaders. So if I actually look up 1971 strikeout leaders and put this over here, not the card, I've, I've owned that card also. But if we go into the pitching leaders uh, on baseball reference website, you guys should be familiar with what's all, if you watch multiple videos. Uh, that is not the top 10 list. Uh, what, where do we grab those values from? So Nolan Ryan isn't even on that list, right? Um, and let's see, Seaver, Gibson, Jenkins. Is Seaver, okay, Seaver's three, Jenkins is four. Bob Gibson isn't on that list either. So I, I find it pretty interesting uh, where we're getting these specific results from. And I know it's not new data. I, I know sometimes we have some issues with that. This has been around for quite a while. So there's a few different ways that we could fix this if we really wanted to. And it's not the main focus on this video. We could feed it more examples. Uh, there could be some specific tools out there that we could use with agents too. And I will be covering that in another video, but maybe this data is on Wikipedia and we can grab that and 
will have better results than just feeding this directly into that prompt uh, with these examples. But either way, that should explain how a parser works. So that's it for the output parsers video. I know there's so many that could be covered in here, but it really depends on what project you are working in. Now, now if you did learn something new in this video, I would appreciate me subscribe to the channel. It's 100% for free, but it does show YouTube that people that are trying to study data science or AI or even data analytics are interested in this content. So I'd really appreciate it because these videos take a long time to produce. Now I have a full course that I am developing over here. I'm uploading two videos every single week, taking you step-by-step -step coding out LLMs. And this playlist is going to be developed through 2024 and 2025, if not more in the future.